now we look at now because you're talking about transient characteristics and now we say that there is going to be some capacitors which are going to get charged or discharged or stuff like that so now we look at uh, different timings that we have talked about already or you know you have seen that in the assignment already so there are different kinds of delays propagation delays are you know there is a propagation delay from input rising to output falling propagation delay from uh, input falling to output rising so this is tpdr tpdf you may also be called reading it as tp uh, uh, hl or tplh something like this okay and average of these two is used to say what is the average propagation delay okay and the rise time and the fall time that you looked at in your assignment also is about uh, the slope of the output which would depend on the load that we have is that okay these four timings any question they are simple you have already done the assignment on that also okay so now there is another set of delays which are called as contamination delays what do you think contamination delays are uh you've done an assignment on inverter you will not be able to respond on contamination delay based on the inverter let us consider a nand gate now can you think of a contamination delay the definition appears to be similar to propagation delay yes sir so this is best case delay earliest that my output can toggle consider the case of a nand gate so we will go into this in more detail in a little while now let us say on the on the 0 to 1 side uh, you know output transitioning from 0 to 1 because a and b have a, are are kind of in parallel with each other hmm so the delays will always be the same however if if just one of them is toggling but what happens if both of them toggle together so if one of them was toggling either a or toggling or b toggling this could be my output waveform but when both toggle together what happens i have extra drive strength to to charge this capacitor and therefore my delay so my input would have, would have been let us say input went low here so my input to output delay now reduces this lesser delay is called as contamination delay okay so yes can you please explain this the last part again so uh, are you able to see that when both a and p a and b are simultaneously driving the output capacitance it will transition faster yes sir so instead of this transition i will see a much faster transition on the output okay so the difference between these two okay okay now now it's clear okay yes sir so just like you have pdr and pdf you have contamination contamination delay rising and contamination delay falling and an average contamination delay associated with the gate uh why is contamination delay important oh uh, sir this determines the uh, speed at which the output switches hmm so why am i interested in the shortest delay also typically i should be interested in only the longest delay yes sir so, even that is my question i mean shortest to mil jayega but longest ka to hame dekhna padega 
Hello. For set of time, is time before which uh, uh, just the uh, range for which uh, the data uh, should remain stable for the clocking, so that the uh, flip flop should uh, capture that uh, that data, and uh, the, after that clocking, the that time is called the whole time. So the range for which the data should again remain stable, so that it perfectly captures the data. Hmm. Any other response? So, B.Tech students, you also done the setup and hold times in your ELD and other courses. B.C. ELD B.E. Yes, um, setup time of flip flop basically. I mean, we the amount of time we will have to hold our D input constant before the rising clock. Mm -hmm. And hold time and, is and hold time is um about the amount of time after the clock edge for which D should be constant. So, yeah. So now do you realize that the contamination delay can mean that your output can now change faster. So your whole time violations can appear if you uh, do not consider contamination delay in your analysis. Hmm? Therefore, both propagation delay and contamination delay are to be characterized for any gate that you will design in your uh, projects also. So I still did not understand how it is uh, rising faster in this case. I mean, if, I, if A and B are switching together. Mm -hmm. so, so let us say A was A, A was one initially and B was also one. Both were one. Okay. So output was zero. Zero. Now let us say only A goes to zero. Yes. What would happen? A device of width W, yeah. WP, will charge the capacitor. Yes. In a different case, only B goes to zero. What would happen? A device of only width W will charge the capacitor. Yes. Now let us consider a case where both at simultaneously go to zero. What would happen? Both will Two charge. devices of yeah. width W will now charge the capacitor. Okay. Two devices charging it up means double the current. Okay. Yeah. Means the capacitor will get charged faster. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Raghav. Uh, yes, sir. So I wanted to ask that I get it that this whole time requirement we are considering contamination today. But sir, for example, as I can see, like just setup time is much more than the whole time requirements. I mean. But from this, for example, sir, this when we are saying that whole time requirement contamination delay, I mean, I will always get some kind of delay. So why I'm worrying, why I'm basically modeling it, because I just want this delay to be there. So it will be always be there. So like in calculations, like how it will help me. So uh, we will look at that uh, in, in longer paths later, Raghav. But for now, realize that we have for any design, we have to qualify setup and hold both. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, and to be able to analyze the whole path, I need the fastest delays. Okay. So because I have to analyze, that is a sign of requirement, I need the fastest delay also. So as a library designer, you have to characterize both the propagation delay and the contamination delay. So sir, like for example, when I'm characterizing this whole delay, I will toggle both the input A and B at the same time. And I will care for the delay I will get will be my contamination delay. But so yes. then how will I model the other delay? Because then basically- So we will toggle. So there are different kinds of, so 
if you will open the .lib file of any gate, so there is a there is a format in which the input to output delays are characterized. Yes, sir. Okay. So in that format, there is an option to also to add two delays linked between two pins. That A to Y, there is there is one propagation delay and there is one con contamination delay. So you have an option to add both the delays in one file itself. The tools that will do the static timing analysis will take care of both the delays. No, sir, I am asking that what, how I will basically come up with this uh, another delay apart from the contamination delay because then I can basically, depending upon how much difference I'm getting between the A input and B input toggling, I can get different kind of delays. Yeah, so I will run three simulations. I will, in one simulation, I will toggle only A. I will get A to Y delay. In second simulation, I will toggle only B. I will get B to Y delay. And in the third simulation, I will toggle A and B both, and I will get uh, the A, A, A slash B to Y delay. So I'll take an average of them. Three. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. The max will become the propagation delay, the min will become the contamination delay. Okay. I know. So either I do three simulations or I, I do, uh, I make my stimuli in such a way that in one simulation itself, I'm able to calculate all three of them. That is a that is a choice every designer has. Okay. Uh, sir. Yes, ma'am. Again, in this uh, example of NAND gate, so I understood that okay, now two devices are have charged the capacitor, but now when it when it has to discharge, right? So again, I mean, if now it's discharging through the NMOS, now how does having two NMOS? Um, in series help in faster discharging of the capacitor. So let us look at it. Thank you, because this is something we want to discuss in just a little while also. So thank you for bringing it up now. We can discuss it now itself. Let us say this node had a small capacitance CX over here. Let us say. Can we say this? Yeah. Okay. Now my input, uh, my output was at one initially, and it has to now go to zero. Huh? So what happened? Either of A or B was zero, which has now gone to one, which means it has to discharge. Now let us first assume that B was one already. A has now gone one. What happens? Because B was already one, the CX is already discharged to ground. Okay. Hmm? So there will be one delay. Right, right. Now let us say A was one. A was uh, one already and B was zero. So B is going to one now. Now what happens? Not just this one has to discharge, the CX also has to discharge. Okay. So this delay will be longer. Yes. So one of the propagation delays will be more than the other, other propagation delay. So these capacitors like CX we have faced, it's, uh, it's basically your, According to your equivalent models, right? When we um, study the equivalent mod models for RC uh, in CMOS, because where yeah. is the CX coming Charge from? on the diffusion capacitance, shared diffusion, single devices, all that. You're talking about extra capacitances on source and drain, no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that is exactly what we're talking about over here. Okay. Sir. 